to Rags to Riches, I'm Lauren and today's video is how to find your ideal client. Now this can be used on Facebook, Instagram or even YouTube, you know, um, finding your ideal client is very important and I didn't actually realise how important it was until I took this free coaching thing and this was one of the subjects that they covered and I was like, oh my god, this makes so much sense and once you know your client and who you are looking for, who you are selling to, then it becomes so much more easy and you are focused on finding that client. So basically, first of all, you need a niche. Now, whether that be like, so basically it's something that makes you stand out from the crowd. So if you're wearing a straw hat in winter, and it's snowing outside, people are going to be like, what a weirdo, wow, that's crazy. And they're going to remember it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying do that for God's sake, but you're going to, you, if someone in the snow in a straw hat, you're going to be like, what the hell? That's just not right. Where do you think they are, Barbados? No, we're in England and it's snowing. <laughs> so yeah, being different makes you stand out from the crowd. Don't be a sheep be the shepherd and follow, make people follow you. That is what a niche is in my mind and in my heart. That is what I believe. And why is it important to have a niche? Because you need to stand out. You really need to stand out from the absolute, absolutely everyone, even the big dogs, you need to stand out from them. And even the big dogs try and stand out from their other competitors, you know, the enemies. That's the way they have to look at them. They have to stand out. They have to do bigger and better things. So that's why it's important. Um, you also want to look at, you know, who do I want to work with? You know, this ideal clients is like, who are you wanting? Who are you wanting to attract? Who do you want? Do you, you've got to think, do I really want to work with that person? Do you really want to work with an alcoholic? Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you've just got to think, who do you want to work with? Um, if I keep looking over here, it's because it's, I've got all my notes here. Um, you've got to think, what are their characteristics? You know, are they crazy? You know, are they really sh quiet and shy? Um, are they really outgoing, really bubbly, really friendly? You know, or do they just want to be in a hole and not talk to anyone all day? <laughs> um, you know, you've just got to really think what sort of characteristics this person has. And then you've also got to think, Okay, what are these people interested in? Are they interested in Coronation Street or are they interested in EastEnders? You know, silly things like that. Like, what What do you think? You've kind of also got to look at yourself, your inner self, and be like, do you want your client to be like you? So I'm quite an outgoing person, so would I want a really quiet person so that I can mentor them better? Or, you know, I can get them to easily buy things off me? You know, you've really got to look at them sort of things. So, you know, what are they, what are they interested in? Are they in? What hobbies do they have? Where do they hang out? Do they go to the pub? Or do they go to the gym? That sort of things, you know, you've got to really think. Do they go to a knitting club? Do they go to a book club? Do they go to the parish council? Parish council. I can't even speak then. You know, and also, the more different you are, the more different things you are or have, the more riches are gonna come in. In America, they have this little saying called, like they say niche, instead of saying niche, they say niche -y. It's kind of weird. So the more niche the more richy. So kind of think like that. So the more different you are, the more money you're gonna get. Um, <clears throat> What sort of Instagrams do these people follow? Do you know, do they follow kittens, dogs? Do they follow like, really luxurious holidays you've really got to dive in and be like what is this person what alcohol do they drink are they a drinker um do they like prosecco or do they like dry white wine you know you've got to really think and be like mm, okay my ideal client will want this they need this they see that and they want that um what are they after also like what is your perfect client after are they after, let's say, are they after fake flowers or are they after real flowers? Or do they not mind? Do they not bother as long as they look nice? 
a lot of people do think like that though as long as they're nice I don't care but a lot of people will be like mm, I only want fresh and some people will be like I'm only buying this one time and one time only and I want it to be perfect so I want fake and I have a diamond pen and I'm telling you <laughs> but this this ideal client is going to consistently change a lot so you also have to think Okay, let's go with a big brand. This brand has just shut down all their shops. Debenhams. Okay, so you would think, if you're thinking of Debenhams, what would you think their ideal client is? I would say a middle-class person. Um, it's a woman and she shops for her husband. She dresses her husband. The husband just says yes and nods. <laughs> they... They will get their family presents from there at Christmas time. If they have an event, they will get their clothes from there. They will get their accessories from there. They will get their nice shoes from there, their good quality shoes from there. Um, if they ever want any perfume or aftershave, they will always buy it from there. It is a middle class woman who shops at Debenhams. So that's the way you've got to think. And also, you always have to think, okay, my client is going to change okay so let's go back 10 years 10 years ago not many people were drinking gin now every bugger is drinking gin now i know if i drink gin i will die <laughs> it's like the quote on uh, mean girls if you get pregnant no if you have sex you will get pregnant and you will die <laughs> that's how i feel about gin if i have gin i will die <laughs> the next day so but everybody's drinking drinking gin so i'm now thinking in my head okay if people some people absolutely love gin and they love trying the new flavors and they love you know if a new one comes out on the supermarket shelves they've got to try it so that is their thing so I thought in my shop, because I sell antiques, secondhand goods, furniture, etc. I'll do, I will buy in more gin cupboards style type of furniture. And it works because I know my, my ideal client likes to drink gin or likes to drink wine. So it'll be a wine cupboard. Do you know what I mean? So I can, I can, the more things that have use, the better. So it's not just a gin cupboard, it's the wine cupboard also. Do you know what I mean? It's, if it's got multiple use, the better it is as well. Sorry, it's customary, but I don't. Okay, so my, this is my ideal client. So uh, my ideal client wants that hidden gem item. So that one of a kind item. They don't, so let's say Ikea is a good one. So Ikea, everybody's got an Ikea bedside table let's say yeah everybody's got it oh i've got that oh i've got that oh, i went to ikea and i got that so this so my client doesn't want that they want that one of a kind item that nobody has that's what makes my business unique because you know it's a one of a kind item i'm never going to get it in again there are items in the shop that i am going to get in again but most of all it's, it's a hidden gem they love finding that treasure, so sometimes they have to go and rumble and rubbage, rubbage, rummage, rummage through things to get their treasure. So you know, oh god, I found it in a, a little shop in in Norton Doncaster, and it was just right at the back of the shop, and it well, it was hidden under there. Don't try and hide things. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but you know, sometimes if you have a little story that goes along with, let's say, this mug. This is just a mug that I drink in the shop. Don't panic. You know, they absolutely love ragdoll cats. <laughs> oh, God, I found it at the back of a little shop in Doncaster. It makes it more... The more stories things have, the more it sells also. So my idol client drinks, obviously. I've said that before. Um, loves looking at before and afters. So the reason why I put that is because I do a lot of before and afters on the uh, pieces of the furniture that I paint up. But just because people really like to look at before and after pictures um since lockdown a lot of people have made their own homemade bars because they love the pub and they couldn't do without the pub so they made a homemade bar now a lot of people in my area have made turned their shirt 
sheds into homemade bars. So I have quite a lot of bar little knickknacks and stuff. Um, custom, well, personalised to the area that I'm in. Um, so that's great. So my my also my ideal client loves coloured glass. I get in a lot of coloured glass. So glass that's blue, green, reds, oranges, lilacs. Um, I get this in um, and it is very unique when it comes in and I only have one item of these things that come in so they really really are attracted to them. Um, my ideal client is also too lazy to paint their own furniture so I offer um, a painting service at the shop so if they want to bring me their chair and I can paint it um, for a service as well. So I'm not just selling paint and giving the service of the painting as well. Um, my person is, uh, my ideal client is a woman also. She is an animal lover. I have a lot of animal items in the shop. So they need to love all creatures, great and small. It's a song, isn't it? <laughs> So yeah, um, that is basically my ideal client in a nutshell. Um, you can apply this to your Facebook, your Instagram, your YouTube. You've just got to look within yourself and be like, okay, does my person love to... Say you're a salon, you know, you're a hairdressing salon. Okay, does my ideal client love expensive shampoos? Do they go for the more expensive brand of shampoo? Okay, if they do, do they like a fragrance with that shampoo? Do they love smells? you know so and yes people normally do and if you can associate shampoo and food together like sweets and stuff a hundred percent a hundred 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 percent as much as fragrance does dry your hair out i know um people don't care it's the smell it's an enjoyment it's a sensation <laughs> so yeah i hope this gives you a few ideas um I really, really do hope it gives you ideas of what an, your ideal client is. And, okay, so you probably might be wondering, what do I do now that I've, I've got my ideal client? And the best way to actually do this is draw a little person, a male or female, a little stick man, middle of the page, and then just draw lines off what your ideal client is. So, like that. <laughs> There's a little person. <laughs> I am not an artist. <laughs> So there you go. Um, yeah, I um, that's my little stick man, woman. Um, yeah, so you probably wonder, okay, what do I do now with all this information? Well, if you were one of them people that were adding people on Facebook and just trying to get them into your group, um, then people are probably not your ideal client to begin with. They So now that you know who your ideal client is, this little stick person, you can go out onto Facebook and Instagram and find that person and add them. Um, you know, so you're not just wasting your time, you've got a quality person there, and yeah, and you should also contact them saying, hi, um, you know, I added you and I saw that you was in my area, let's say, if you were a shop or a salon or whatever, I, um, or hi, I saw that you was in this group and I thought I would add you because I thought you might be interested in this product, or you know, hi, we live in the same area and I have a shop. And I thought you might be interested in supporting a local business or to see what bargains I've got. You never know, there might be something there for you. Something along them lines, you know, give them a message also. Don't bombard them, don't message them every day because that drives me mad. <laughs> the amount of people I get on Facebook adding me is ridiculous. And it's just basically, here, I'm selling this. Here, I'm selling that. Buy it, buy it, buy it. No, 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 I don't want that. I'd rather have a conversation with someone, get to know them. And then I'd be like, okay, now I'll we'll come to your group. You've got to put the effort in. You can't just be like, hi, I'm here. Add me. Come to my group. You know you want to. <laughs> it's just, it drives me up the wall. You've got to have a personal connection with people to get them to join things, do things, buy things off you. That is why... These pyramid schemes, these FM frigging things, we've all been added to them. Absolutely everyone's been added to them. I've got about, I've got about eight people. I'm in about eight groups selling FM products. Um, it drives me mad. It drives me mad. 
and that I feel that these only work for a small percentage of people because they just get their friends, their close friends and their close family to buy off them and they feel like, yay, I'm on top of the world. Um, a lot of people don't expand outside of that small circle. So that's why these pyramid schemes go straight down and they're not great. So yeah, don't join pyramid scheme guys because it's not fun. I hope this gave you a lot, a lot of information. Um, it really helped me in finding my ideal client and who they are. Um, also, don't forget to put like what age they are. So like, are they my age? Are they in their 30s? Are they in their 40s? Are they in their 50s? Are they much older? Are they still in school? <laughs> I just don't know. So, you know, make sure you put your age and gender, etc. Or if your, your thing is for everyone, perfect. Um, I hope you have a great day and I hope you have some great sales and I hope you find your perfect client and start making some wonga. <laughs> Bye for now guys. Bye.